everyone. Um, uh, we're, we're very excited about this presentation. Uh, thank you for having us at Interchain Conversations. Um, so my name is Brent, and I lead strategy and partnerships at Tenderman. And you know, we're we're very excited about uh, presenting this new Dex module today. Uh, joining us, we have Sonny Agarwal. Uh, he's been on a few talks already. Uh, you know who he is. We have Kyung, uh, CEO of B Harvest, um, who's who's um, uh, the visionary behind building this liquidity module. And uh, you know. Uh, Kim, would you like to uh, introduce yourself and, and also uh, uh, go through your presentation? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, CEO of B Harvest, and uh, since uh, last three months, we are building uh, the uh, inter blockchain AMM for the Cosmos Hub right now. So you can check out GitHub repo, which is actively uh, improving right now. So. Uh, uh, let me start up my presentation to uh, introduce mm. the inter-blockchain AMM we are building right now. So my presentation uh, is with uh, three parts. Uh, one is uh, introducing the interchain DEX as the vision of Cosmos Hub. And then the next one is uh, introducing AMM model, which is the prominent form of future decks. And then uh, lastly, we are describing some uh, different differences uh, from uh, universe, Uniswap style AMM. So uh, in the context of uh, IBC, uh, IBC is currently uh, almost ready for uh, operation right now. So it will be launched in early 2021 next year and then other blockchains including uh, ethereum and bitcoin and more will be connected to cosmos of very soon uh, ethpack will be also be launched in uh, early expecting to be launched in uh, 2021 and then there are several btc pack pocs already to be adopted on cosmos of uh, very soon so uh, in this context we can expect that uh, in next year, uh, we'll have a lot of tokens floating around in our uh, Cosmos Hub. So uh, in this context, uh, trading and uh, liquidity are one of the most primitive utilities to be provided for Cosmos Hub users. So uh, IBC itself is connecting different blockchains, but it is a functionality, but not uh, utility for Cosmos Hub users. Uh, and we think that uh, the DEX is, will be the most important uh, utility for the end users to be uh, utilized uh, for their demands. So uh, to explain the Uniswap successful marketplace, uh, they are uh, based on only 25% of total cryptocurrency trading volume. But uh, extra 75% is not uh, based on Ethereum. So uh, because Cosmos Hub is based on uh, inter-blockchain connectivity, we can position to be uh, interchain DEX, which can be uh, our potential marketplace for uh, almost 75% uh, volumes. So uh, in this slide, we I want to explain why automated market maker is a, a form of future DEX. So in uh, traditional order book based exchange, uh, market making participation was monopolized by professional trading companies. So uh, this kind of monopol like uh, monopoly caused a lot of problem. Uh, uh, because uh, it, need, it requires a lot of uh, difficult uh, conditions for this kind of company. So they need a significant capital investment and very sophisticated financial engineers with experience. And they also have to secretly deal with exchange operators 
for uh, fee rebate. So uh, in result, uh, this kind of monopolized uh, market making participation will result in expensive and selfish and unsustainable liquidity provided by only several professional market makers uh, playing in this global market. But in automated market makers, uh, which is AMM, uh, this is democratizing market making activities. So uh, anyone without enough capital or technology can join market making activities. Uh, so uh, the investment opportunity opens to everyone. So it increases the uh, competition, results in more reasonable liquidity costs because uh, supply is much bigger than uh, professional uh, market makers. Also, uh, the in incentive uh, mechanism is more transparent and direct. So trading fees are not distributed to exchange operators, but to liquidity providers. So uh, it removes the middlemen, which is our exchange operators, and it provides transparent and direct incentivization to liquidity providers. Also, uh, AMM is automated market maker, which means that uh, the rule of uh, liquidity providing is already uh, decided in the code base. So uh, users can easily expect uh, the, the quality and size of uh, liquidity provided by automated market makers. So it, it is transparent, rule-based, and more sustainable by open participation. So sustainability by open participation means that if someone leaves the liquidity pool, anyone can join right now. So uh, this open participation uh, guarantees us for more sustainable uh, liquidity quality than uh, uh, pro, uh, market makers provided by uh, only several professional market makers. So uh, now we want to uh, explain our implementation, a more efficient uh, AMM model than uh, current uh, standard model. So uh, first of all, we are uh, adopting a batch execution uh, batch execution means that uh, not uh, every order is executed uh, separately, but it is uh, accumulated in one batch and then uh, executed at the same time on every end of a batch. So maybe tens of orders or hundreds of orders will be accumulated in, in a batch and then we execute it uh, uh, accordingly. So uh, in this uh, process, we have a universal execution price, which means that we have only one swap price for one batch. So every order included in a batch has the same uh, universal execution price. So uh, it means that if you throw orders earlier or later, uh, the swap price is same. So there are no, there is no uh, prioritized rule uh, based on uh, order timing or other stuff. So this significantly reduces uh, front running problems and also removes unnecessarily low latency competition. Low latency competition means that uh, low latency means a very uh, short time competition. It means that uh, for the most uh, ordinary traders, they are not counting like sub second timing. Uh, they just see the price, see the chart and uh, push the submit button. But in, in professional trading world, they are using algorithmic trading and they are uh, watching different prices from different markets and they are instantly uh, executing transaction, so uh, they are 
always faster than ordinary traders. But uh, in our environment, uh, uh, every order in a batch is uh, equally transacted. So load latency advantage is minimized in our environment, which benefits ordinary traders uh, to have a fairer uh, execution environment. So this graph uh, uh, generally explains uh, uh, continuous execution and batched execution. Continuous execution is uh, applied by uh, all uh, centralized exchange and also uh, applied by uh, Uniswap. And uh, this continuous execution has a different surprise for every order. So if the order one is faster than order two to be executed, then uh, he will have better price than order two. So uh, this order is sorted by order arrival time or just uh, minus preference or uh, by gas price. Uh, so there are a lot of um, dependent variable uh, to be prioritized. So in this environment, professional traders are much better at uh, competition than ordinary traders. But in batch execution, if the orders are in same batch, uh, there are no prior prior priority there. So they are having same surprise. So it decreased the competition uh, for different kinds of uh, problem such as order, order arrival time, gas price or minus preference, uh, which solves most of the uh, front running problem and other competition problem. So a uh, second characteristic of our uh, model is uh, uh, we are adopting traditional order book based matching and liquidity pool AMA model in one uh, DEX. So uh, liquidity pool participates in order matching just as an additional order submitter and uh, liquidity is provided in both ways, limit orders and liquidity pool. So uh, uh, people can uh, participate in liquidity pool as a, a pool investor uh, for long longer time, but uh, professional market makers can also participate with uh, limit order uh, transactions. So it will uh, further enrichment of liquidity quality for users is possible with this kind of model. So uh, this graph uh, explains the difference between uh, three models. So first graph is describing order book model. Uh, users are transacted each other, but some trend, uh, orders are not matched. Uh, in figure two, uh, this is a liquidity pool model. Every users are uh, trading with liquidity pool directly. But in hybrid model, uh, we find a matching between users and then uh, the, the others are uh, absorbed by liquidity pool. So uh, we think that uh, this hybrid model is better to find matching than other two model uh, because it provides uh, both way to uh, um, have a uh, matching on any order. So uh, this graph is uh, generally explains how uh, match price and transaction amount is decided in traditional order book based matching. So you can see the blue line is uh, selling orders and uh, red line is buy orders. And then we will have a matching price and transaction amount as in the graph. But in hybrid model, uh, uh, liquidity pool also participates in a matching uh, process. So they can provide uh, additional uh, orders um, described as a, a shaded uh, area here so that uh, 
the price moves less, but uh, transacted uh, more amount. So uh, liquidity pool will help users to find a uh, better matching uh, from liquidity pool. So uh, the other uh, advantage of our implementation is dynamic batch period. So uh, uh, usually we are uh, suggesting uh, batch period will be uh, just one block or uh, maybe several blocks, but not so many blocks because if the uh, batch period is too long, then the price discovery can be too delayed. So people can annoy it by uh, delay. But in uh, high volatility status, uh, we want to make batch period slower so that they can have more uh, traders to coming in to find uh, best uh, price at that time. So uh, we want to have an automated uh, dynamic batch period um, so that uh, the batch period can be uh, longer when the price change is, is significantly large. So this graph uh, explains that uh, for, for uh, higher absolute price change, we will have a longer batch length so that we can uh, have more traders to coming in, uh, such as uh, market makers and arbitrators, so that we can have better price within this batch. Okay, so this is the uh, end of our uh, presentation. So we can uh, now hand over to Brent for uh, Q&A. Thanks, Young. Uh, yeah, uh, we're really excited about this uh, AMM liquidity module. Um, so uh, wanted to open up some questions uh, regarding um, some, of, some of the advantages. So, so I'll just start and we'll, we'll have a, a question and answer session, um, uh, more of a discussion panel on this. So um, my first question is, uh, how, do you, how do you view um, the difference between a uh, liquidity uh, module DEX such as this that can exist on a, the Cosmos Hub versus all the other DEXs we see in the Ethereum space, um, you know, some of the AMMs and just just other DEXs. What, what do you see as as the main advantages and and, and uh, uh, additional features? Mm -hmm. So, in the context of IDC. Uh, in Cosmos environment, we will have uh, different kinds of blockchains uh, connected uh, to the Cosmos hub and other uh, blockchains in Cosmos ecosystem. So uh, connectivity is our strength compared to Ethereum. So I think uh, more uh, diverse kinds of uh, crypto assets, including NFT and uh, fungible assets, we be floating around Cosmos Hub and other blockchains around the Cosmos ecosystem. So we will have a more variety of uh, ecosystem uh, so that we should uh, make a, a DEX, uh, which is a marketplace to trade each other. So this is advantage. Uh, but we also have a disadvantage uh, compared to Ethereum because Ethereum ecosystem is built on one blockchain, the Ethereum POW uh, consensus. So uh, all the applications are synchronously uh, connected each other so that they can have more connected um, uh, applications between different applications. So, uh, but in our environment, uh, the, the consensus between different blockchains are async asynchronous. So uh, in that uh, point of view, our uh, application connectivity can be uh, less uh, strength than uh, Ethereum cases. Thank, thank you, Kang. Yeah, you know, it, it's very apparent that, you know, in Cosmos as, a, as an ecosystem that promotes interoperability, 
you know, it, it allows just significant functionality to connect with other blockchains when it comes to some of the, this uh, uh, AMM activity. Uh, so it, it, it's good to get those thoughts. Um, so I, I, I want to also uh, ask, ask Sunny um, a bit about this uh, overall architecture of, of the, a DEX like this in terms of the, the batch mechanism. Do you view any uh, advantages or disadvantages in terms of how uh, this can be implemented uh, on a system like Cosmos versus um, what we would see in uh, other 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 Dex ecosystems? I, I guess in relationship to liquidity dividers as well as um, um, what you can can expect in AMM. Um, I mean, one thing for sure is that batch execution is like really hard to implement on other uh, frameworks, especially or at least on like EVM like frameworks, because they don't have like the concept of an end blocker, which is something that's really useful. Uh, basically, like, the problem is the other chains don't have the ability to have like, or, okay, Ethereum doesn't have the ability to do like self executing code, which which is what something that's nice that we can do in the Cosmos SDK is that we can like, you know, all the transactions can queue up all the things to be batch executed. And then we have this self executing code that executes at the end of every single block that can do the batch execution process for us. So that's like, <clears throat> that's why you haven't really seen it occur on any Ethereum DEXs because the, the, the functionality to do it is kind of much more difficult to implement. Um, and so, what was the second part of your question? Yeah, I, I also want to explore a bit on um, just just what it means to be a liquidity provider. Uh, mm -hmm. So, one way to look at this is that uh, in in a in a exchange ecosystem, there's normal market makers, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, folks that are actually uh, making a, a spread from the bid ask spread, and then right. there's liquidity providers. Technically, liquidity providers are long fees and they're you know short and permanent loss uh mm -hmm. how how should how should the cosmos ecosystem decks learn from what we've seen in other amms that that exist such as such as uniswap or or, mm -hmm. or even even learning lessons from from developments of things like sushi swap mm -hmm. um so i think obviously some sort of Liquidity mining rewards are quite helpful in incentivizing that liquidity to happen. Um, if that helps definitely cover the impermanence loss, uh, at least to if you're trying to like get your system bootstrapped. Um, and then I think what, one thing that you know you start you, we've started to see in Ethereum systems is more sophisticated liquidity providers, and what that means is. People, like if you're a sophisticated liquidity provider, you're not just like dropping your liquidity into the pool and like piecing off for like uh, uh, a year. Your sophisticated liquidity providers they they are constantly adding liquidity and removing liquidity from the pool when it's uh, profitable to to do so. Uh, and so this is like interesting, where it's like you know people always think of like oh AMM liquidity providing on AMMs is this is like super like laid back thing you you deposit and forget but it's like well then the problem is when you have others like you know there's this notion that like amms like democratized uh market making and it's like and you know on other systems like order books and stuff it's like oh if you're the better market maker and you will always have an edge and you'll like beat out the 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 less Best smart market makers than you, and people are like oh liquidity AMMs are going to solve it, but it's like not really. If you're if you're, you know if the uh, the, the more sophisticated liquidity providers who are intelligently pull, putting in and out liquidity, they're going to be screwing over the unsophisticated liquidity providers. And so I feel like this is like one concept that really kind of needs to be done away with. And I think one thing that would be interesting in Cosmos is how we can like think about this. What you know what are ways we can make it so if it we have to decide, is our goal to, to democratize it? If so, what are the architectural changes that we need to do that? Maybe there's uh, lock times for like, you know, you if you deposit liquidity, your liquidity has to be locked for a certain amount of time before you're allowed to remove it. Or maybe we have to design better AMM al algorithms that like, um, you know, for example, what the, the sophisticated providers are taking some knowledge, like looking at some data and deciding when to 
input, add or remove liquidity. Well, maybe our AMM algorithm can look at that same data and do it for everyone. So we basically just need to be, you know, AMMs were a good starting point, but we have to be smarter, especially when we think about liquidity provider incentives. For sure. Yeah. And, and to, to touch upon that, like, um, you know, we, we've been watching these, these DEX wars happen in the ecosystem. So, you know, uh, uh, you know, during DeFi summer, you know, we saw um, new DEXs come out that, you, you know, had a way to either improve the AMM algorithm or smooth the curve or maybe adjust the algorithm to uh, be optimized for stable coins and, and, uh, and, and other types of assets. So that's what we saw with Curve. Um, we, we saw platforms like Dodo come out that, that wanted to modify the curve that they're using. So, so this is a question for, for Hyung. Um, you know, this, this new uh, DEX liquidity module that, that, that you're building um, is able to allow both an AMM uh, mechanism as well as limit orders. Um, could, could you talk about just, just how that's going to change this new dynamic? Um, you know, someone, uh, made a, made a, uh, a comment about, um, um, just, just the fact that, you know, there are, uh, limit orders on this as well. Like, mm -hmm. could you expand a, a bit about that as well? Sure. So, uh, market makers by limit orders, they are not obligated to provide liquidity in given status. So they can flee away anytime they want to remove uh, this uh, liquidity order orders from order book. Uh, so this is, I explain this as a instant liquidity provided, but in liquidity pool, it is more sustainable because we have a withdrawal fee uh, for each withdrawal. So they cannot like uh, deposit and withdraw uh, like several times in a day uh, because the, they have a cost to withdraw. But this is a kind of a, a, a decision to make in, in community because it increases the stability of our liquidity, but it decreases the freedom of market makers. So professional market makers, we are advise them to provide liquidity as a limit order transactions not liquidity pool investor. So liquidity pool investor will be passive investors, which are not institutional uh, or professional traders, but amateur traders and amateur investors who want to passively invest in this uh, liquidity pool. So this is our design philosophy as now, but I think um, many things should be discussed in community to decide which kind of parameter is necessary and important to be decided. Absolutely. Hey, hey guys, I think we're uh, running out of time. So if you want to wrap up uh, with final thoughts, that'd be great. Yeah, final thought, quick question. What what does this mean for the Cosmos Hub? Um, if, if there is a, a, a DEX module like this adopted or if there could be multiple uh, DEX modules, what, what does this mean for the Hub the, of Cosmos? Hmm. So uh, we, we have uh, the prime um, objective of uh, Cosmos Hub as an uh, interoperability and uh, interchain, uh, inter blockchain communication. And we communicate each other with contents. So we are uh, constantly figure out which content we want to communicate. And in, in this period of time, uh, trading and liquidity is definitely the most important communication topic as now. So we think that uh, the contents will evolve to have different kinds of uh, contents to be communicated. But as now, most important thing to be implemented in, on the hub is the, the contents of liquidity. So uh, this is the context, context of our liquidity module as now. And um, um, we, as a uh, implementer and uh, ecosystem participant in e uh, Cosmos ecosystem, uh, we are obligated to uh, improve our uh, liquidity module in in definite time so that we can catch up uh, different designs which can be adopted in Cosmos Hub 
for better utility. So uh, we will do our best to uh, keep improving our uh, module for better uh, utility and compatibility around the Cosmos ecosystem. Thank you so much. Well, you know, I'm, I'm certainly very excited about uh, a lot of this DeFi activity and, and the future of, of uh, interchain uh, DeFi protocols in the Cosmos ecosystem. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for, for uh, all your hard work on this. And, and, you know, we're very excited. Thank you for inviting me to this talk. Thanks, guys. We're going to transition to the next session now. <laughs>